Tubers, it's Jordan Pierre, aka JP Dillon, and uh, we've got a little bit of an interesting experiment today. We've got a uh, an old Fisher XP65 woofer, and uh, the owner really doesn't want to replace it, even though it's got a shorted voice coil from somebody overheating it. So we're going to do something a little bit unorthodox, uh, a little bit different, and we're going to transplant a voice coil from another good known speaker with a similar DC resistance and impedance to this cone. And although I won't be able to do this on camera because obviously I need all my dexterity available, I just want to show you what I found here. I've already cut the uh, spider free and everything to pull this out and show it to you. So as you can see, the old voice coil, the camera will focus here, and maybe not. Anyway, right. if you can't see, the voice coil is absolutely charred. It's bubbling, it's turned into a little blob of copper, it's dead. The donor is a woofer from an Advent, Jensen Era Advent 6.5 inch. It's got the exact same voice coil diameter. The impedance is 8 ohms, and the DC resistance is pretty damn close. That one measures about 5.2 on the good woofer that's on the other enclosure. And this one measures about 5.4. So, unless you're a, a true audiophile, you're really not going to notice the difference. The only difficulty is going to be transplanting this voice coil to that cone. So, we have to figure out how to transplant this to that. And uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to put the camera down and uh, I'm going to start on the process and I'll give you updates as things happen. So, uh, stay tuned. This could be very interesting. I'd like to see the outcome. Okay, so here's a continuation of where we are right now. Uh, the voice coils have been removed from each cone. We have the one from the Advent driver, and I've trimmed away all the old paper, but I've left a bit of the epoxy ring here. Uh, one, because it's very difficult to remove without hurting the voice coil former. But secondly, when we remove the old voice coil, uh, because the glue came with it, it kind of weakened the structure of the cone a little bit. So I'm going to use this lip here as a brace to hold the cone together and then I'm going to put small layers of epoxy around that perimeter there that's been weakened to strengthen the rigidity of it so that it will uh, last a little bit better. Uh, so now what we're going to try to do is we're going to install this voice coil into this cone and attach the old spider to it, epoxy it all up, let it set, and see what happens from there. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. I've got the new voice coil epoxy to the cone. That's been set up and centered. I'm waiting for the epoxy to dry on the spider, which is attached to the uh, voice coil and the cone as well. And I'm getting that all centered up. I made marks inside of the cone, which you can't really see, or inside of the voice coil, to denote maximum top, bottom, and center points so that I could get it properly centered with the uh, equal amount of travel. When that's done, I'll re-glue the spider back to the basket, and then we'll wire up our voice coil, re-foam it, and uh, listen to it. So, uh, so far, so good. It's looking all right. Stay tuned. Here it is, all put back together. We uh, just haven't put the dust cover on it yet. Everything's epoxy together. I got the lead wire soldered in. I get a nice DC resistance, smooth travel with no rub. So we're gonna put a dust cap on this and see how it sounds. This is the moment of truth. We're gonna hook, we got it hooked up to an amplifier now. We're gonna listen to it, see what it sounds like. So it does work got to be careful about the volume you crank it up too high and it'll bottom out but the other woofer does that too so I'm not really too concerned about it these are going in a sealed cabinet so they'll have a little bit of dampening factor left to them but all in all I think this is a very successful transplant of a voice coil so uh, yeah we'll uh, put them back in the cabinet and uh, I think the customer will be very happy anyway uh, thanks for watching the video although somewhat abbreviated Perhaps uh, if I get enough funding for a tripod or something, I'll be able to show you a little more detail on what I do in real time. 
not to mention a bigger memory card. I can really only record about maybe five to eight minutes at a time. So uh, again, thanks for watching. I'm going to put a dust cap on this thing, shove it back in the cabinet, and we're going to move on to the next thing.